Evening, everybody. <laughs> um, call to order the 10th, 2024 Ventnor City Commission meeting. Would everyone please rise to the flag salute? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Lisa, will you roll call, please? Commissioner Landgraf? Here. Commissioner Mento? Commissioner Mento is absent. Mayor Creeble? Here. Lisa, would you please read the uh, open public meetings notice? Pursuant to the open public meetings act, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided. The agenda has been posted on the city website, the city and city hall, and on the city's website. Thank you. Would you <laughs> please read the live streaming announcement? You have enough breath. The City of Ventnor offers live streaming and the option of public comment via remote access. Public who participate remotely will be muted during the commission meeting, except during the public comment portions of the meeting. Any persons attempting to disrupt the meeting may be denied access at the discretion of the city. In the event remote access is unavailable due to a technology malfunction or other reason behind, beyond the city's control, the city will not pause or stop the live meeting. City commission meetings are held in person and the public is welcome to attend. The best way to ensure an individual's ability to publicly comment is to attend in person so that the comments may be made in the event of a technology malfunction. The city reserves the right to discontinue offering a public comment via remote access at the discretion for, for any future meetings. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have no presentations scheduled for this evening. We have no department head reports. Um, there is no capital discussion, but Commissioner Landgraf, if you'd like to give some updates regarding any capital projects? Yes, we have quite a few construction projects going on in the city uh, now. Um, first is Winchester Avenue bulkhead. We're about overall 50% complete. Bulkhead itself is more than that, but there's a lot of other work going on in that area. Um, taking out the old bulkhead, uh, some tiebacks, as well as um, some paving and concrete flat work that'll have to be done there. So that we anticipate that being finished sometime late winter, early spring. Um, traffic signals, the Little Rock project, the smaller one, which was just a, uh, not a traffic signal, but a um, pedestrian crossing signal is complete, except for some punch list items. Uh, we had a, a volume issue that we seem to have been able to resolve. We've lowered as much as we're legally allowed to lower it. There was a threshold, we're down at the bottom of that. So we hope that works out for the residents there. Um, the concrete work should start next week on Oxford Avenue for that traffic intersection. Uh, that again, we hope that should be finished by sometime early spring. Somerset Avenue sewer, that's really out to bid. It's not, uh, we hope to award that in November. That's a 90% design phase. Boardwalk Lumber, we hope to award that also. That's going out to bid and award that in December just for the purchase of the lumber. Same for the basketball court. That bid should also go out and be awarded in November, one of our only meeting in November. Um, uh, uh, Shelly asked if we could talk to the mic. Okay, we're trying to do that and read to it. We have that. The thing, do you have that? All right. Um, Fulton Avenue storm, that's really not too much going on there. That's really it for capital improvements. The uh, Army Corps did advise us that they awarded the beach replenishment project to Great Lakes. That will start sometime this winter. Uh, they did not give us an exact date. And the total project is $38 million. We figure our portion of that is going to be about seven to $900,000 estimated. Um, other stuff's really announcements, so that's really just the capital stuff for now. Okay, thank you. Yep. Did you um, coming through your office, Tom, or I didn't hear about any of the bids for the stage coming? Oh, that? that's the top thing. Yeah, the seventeenth. Seventeenth is 17th. when they come back. We'll get the bid opening on ten seventeen. Ten seventeen is a bid opening. Yep. A week from today. Okay. Thank you. Um, so going through the these uh, the, these next items are um, going to be taken action on in the in the normal meeting. Uh, these are um, uh, this is our our workshop meeting, so we open for discussion among us. Um, first is the minutes of September twenty sixth. We're going to be pulling those. Um, 
so that um, we can hold off until Commissioner Mento is back because you were absent. Yeah, we're here, right? Um, then we have a ordinance introduction, and this is an increase of the uh, mercantile license across the board for all um, uh, residential properties. So this is our mercantile license for all short-term rentals. The ordinance increasing the fee from five hundred to seven fifty. Yeah, Mayor, can I board. can I just clarify? Uh, we had a tiered system that was right. 500 for one bedroom, 750 for two, and 1,000 for three or more. Uh, but the the third party that manages this for us really isn't able to effectively do the tiered system. So we're okay. doing, this is a recommendation to change those fees to a flat fee of 750 regardless. So it's not technically an in increase. It's an increase if you had a one bedroom. Right. Otherwise, it's kind of status quo. Okay. So... All right. I don't. Uh, I it's still. I, I don't have any any issues with that. No. Well, that's a functionality thing. We weren't able to, like I said, the um, host group that we had that helps us manage these wasn't able to do the tiers. So right. it came to us and said, "Look, let's just make it a flat rate." And we don't have very many one bedrooms, so it's not affecting a ton of. Right. People. Okay. Good. Uh, next item is uh, resolution is. Um, uh, looks like I'm a little bit out of or, oh, ordinance uh, adoption, uh, public hearing adoption. This is amending the vehicles and traffic section 21430 for parking. This is uh, provide uh, the North Derby uh, Avenue. Uh, so it's public hearing for that. Um, and this is so that we are changing the no parking on North Derby on the east side from the hours of 7 a.m. The 9 a.m. on Wednesdays only to allow a COA to handle trash collection. So I'm sure there'll be some learning curve for those neighbors to get used to that change. But they basically asked for it so that because it's such a hard street to navigate. Is anything anything else to? We had a, a meeting with the residents there. We sent out a letter to all the folks that live on the 100 and 200 block of North Derby, and we met with them about 12 of them, I say, one Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. um, OCA was here. Um, we had our PD was here. And uh, I think Public Works, yeah, Rick was here. Somebody from Public Works was here. Trash trucks weren't able to get down the street when everybody was parking there in the summertime. So this will allow the inside of that curve right at Derby before you get to the bridge, mm -hmm. no parking from the fire hydrant all the way to the to Dorset Avenue. So that'll allow that to happen for two hours on Wednesday mornings. It allows trash and recycling to be picked up, and they're going to actually add um, yard waste the same day. Right. So they're going to do it all the same day. That's smart. That doesn't happen anywhere else, so that's good. It's a really hard street to navigate, and with all the new construction on, it makes it even more difficult. So hopefully that's a solution. Um, then we have uh, a number of uh, tax abatements. So this is through consent, um, resolutions 2024-277 to 2024 two. Nine four two nine two eight seven are all tax abatements. These resolutions cover the following residences: one hundred five South Suffolk, one hundred South Portland, one hundred eight South Rossboro, fifty one fifteen A Atlantic Avenue, fifty five oh five Atlantic Avenue, fifty seven oh three Atlantic Avenue, three North Buffalo, five North Buffalo, two ten North Harvard, nine oh three North Cambridge, and lastly one. 17B North Portland Avenue. So that's a, uh, a lot of tax abatements. I still think that program is, is obviously popular and works for the city and for the residents, in my opinion. Um, and then we go on to uh, uh, resolutions to dispose of surplus that's no longer in use. Um, a resolution is um, another tax refund uh, in the amount of 6882 Dollars. Uh, another resolution is another tax refund of uh, nine thousand four hundred dollars, and another uh, refunding a floor a floor plan a floor plane permit of fifty dollars. So this is mostly um, some record keeping stuff. And the last P Q and R. Our resolution, uh, Interlocal Government Access Agreement for the Atlantic City uh, AC, uh, Utilities Authority to propose to, the purpose of interconnecting for the water systems. This is something we renew every five years, I believe. Is that right? That's correct. And then um, this is, and then uh, Q is a resolution uh, that authori authorizing milling and paving on Edgewater Avenue, not to exceed $21,509.36. 
And the last of the um, uh, resolutions by consent is uh, authorizing an amendment to our fire chief's appointment agreement. That is to uh, basically bring them up into this similar conditions as our uh, police chief. We all discussed that in private. So that's it for the consent. Then we will have uh, bills and payrolls. Um, and uh, any discussion items this evening, Tom or Lance? Do you have anything to discuss? I think I think we have one thing that we'll discuss in executive session. Right, later. that's what that's I recall. Yeah. That's about it. Okay. Um, and then um, the only other thing, uh, I mean, it's really just to, to make you aware. There's been a, some discussion about uh, parking uh, grace period, so that's something that we've been discussing internally and I believe the VBA has asked us to ask me to meet them next Tuesday. If you want to join for that meeting, um, you're more than welcome commissioner. Yeah. I have a hearing that night. There's a discussion about the grace period, which is normally from November 1st to March 31st, um, which is normally, I'm sorry, uh, which is, I don't mean to throw a curveball here. If there's, if I didn't, I don't think I mentioned it, but, um, we're just talking about how it works now and maybe adding some more time to it as well. It was Thanksgiving to right. It was uh, it was uh, Thanksgiving to just Black Friday to right. um, to uh, I think by resolution it was always to like January, but then we extended it last year to March, I think, or even April. Right. So we're talking about doing it even sooner, possibly in November first, if everybody's in agreement on it. So look for that in the discussion through Tom. Okay. And then, um, uh, so uh, at this point, we can open up for public comment. Uh, any any items that we've talked about so far? Um, can I have a motion for opening up the uh, for public comment on anything that we've talked about so far? Make that motion. Second. Roll call, Lisa. Mr. Langrath? Yes. Mayor Kriebel? Yes. There'll be another. Uh, portion of the meeting for open for public comment on anything. This is for just about things that we've talked about so far in the workshop meeting. If you'd like to speak. Anything we talked about so far. If you have something else, then you can wait till the till the very end. Anybody in the on the on Zoom that would like to speak about anything we've talked about so far? Just Danette in here. So unless she has something she wants to ask. Nanette? Okay. Usually calls. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then we're good. All right. Good. Good to see you, Nanette. Um, seeing none. Um, motion to close public portion. So moved. Second. Roll call, Lisa. Commissioner Landgraf. Yes. Mayor Kriebel. Yes. That closes the workshop portion of tonight's meeting. Uh, we will not be approving minutes from September 6th. These will be scheduled on October 24th. And can I have a motion to introduce Ordinance 2024-024 as described? Motion to introduce Ordinance 2024-024. Second. Roll call, Lisa. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Kriebel? Yes. Can I have a motion to open for public hearing ordinance 2024-023? I'll make that motion. I'll second. I have a roll call, Lisa. Commissioner Langren? Yes. Mayor Kriebel? Yes. Anyone from the public have a uh, public comment? Ordinance 023. Anyone in the Zoom have a public comment on ordinance 023? This is uh, no parking on North Derby. No. Hearing none, I have a motion to close public comment. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call, Lisa. Commissioner Langley? Yes. Mayor Kriebel? Yes. I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2024-023 as described. Motion to adopt 2024-023. I'll second. I have a roll call, Lisa. Commissioner Langley? Yes. Mayor Kriebel? Yes. May I have a motion to adopt resolutions 2024-277 through 2024-294 by consent. Make that motion. Second. 
At roll call, Lisa. Commissioner Landgraf? Yes. Mayor Creeble. Thank you. And um, who's going to read bills and payroll? I'll do it. <laughs> so we have pay payroll from September 15th through September 28th, 2024, in the amount of $695,445.15. And we have bills in the amount of $1,506,000. $626.17. Thank you. Can I have a motion uh, to pay bills and payroll? I'll make that motion. Second. I will second. Roll call, Lisa. Commissioner Langrath? Yes. Mayor Creeble? Yes. Seeing no announcements for safety reports this evening, uh, are there any commissioner comments? Commissioner Langrath? Uh, just a couple. Um, I already talked about the beach replenishment. Um, with the weather we've been having, we're going to keep the pier open until November 1st, uh, October 31st or whichever is easier to do when everybody's on. Um, also, there's a post out there on the beach chair corrals. We're going to start, you need, if you have chairs out there, please take them out of the corrals by November 1st. If not, we will cut the locks and throw them in the trash. So it's not beach time. Well, this weekend was, today was. Um, the last thing is something we've talked about a couple of times, both here and at the planning board meeting, and that's these new um, uh, New Jersey PAC rules that the DEP through the governor, governor has proposed to change will significantly negatively impact, we believe, and most local municipalities are against them. Senator Palestina sent out uh, a letter to the Press of Atlantic City. Our consultant, Jim Rattel, our planning consultant, um, asked us, or so we already have a resolution that we passed against it, Yes, if we wanted to put together a letter to also send up to the DEP. Um, this has been a long, ongoing process. They've been published now, and the comment period ends, I think, the end of next week. I think the 17th, something like that, a week from today. Um, and I, we, we put a resolution together. We can put a letter. It doesn't. We've asked them for two years to change these rules, and they have not budged. Um, they met with us. They met with us here with Cape May County reps, Ocean County reps. Atlanta County representation and said, oh yeah, we listed good ideas, didn't change a thing. Um, these are, will significantly negatively impact development on the barrier islands. Um, they are looking at data that's old. We are planning for the year 2100 for flooding at that point. We should look at it incrementally. That's what Senator Palestine is asking for um, in his letter. It was in the press a couple weeks ago, a couple of days ago, I should say. Um, so I don't know if we want to do a, a, another letter. We can put something together, basically mimic his, mm -hmm. and just send it up to our representatives so they can pass it on to legislature. That's the biggest problem. They didn't do this through legislature. They did it through rulemaking, which is problematic. Um, it came up with the green team meeting as well. And if you think about them, we were looking for, you know, their sustainability and the, um, and they are, you know, they're against it as well. Really? Yeah, I mean, they were in discussion. I mean, look, that was, we did, the state adopted and the feds adopted a lot of rules through FEMA. These super, supersede FEMA. Right. Those are the experts. FEMA is the experts on this stuff. You know, they're a little busy this week and last couple of weeks down in Florida. But this is something that is, is just too egregious. You're going to have people that already raised their homes and they're not going to be able to get flood insurance because these rules required it in certain areas to raise it another five feet. You're going you're to have lifts in the middle of the street to lift people up to their house. So I don't know what they're... And just from a practical basis, the, our lots are small. Like yeah. You get the stairs around. It just doesn't... Houses like that, they're, you're going to be into the right-of-way yeah. in almost every house. Yeah, they're going to be internal. What's going to happen? You're going to put them in through the, through the, through the door and then into the, the house and the take house. up all the space, yeah. yeah. So anyway, it, I'm, I agree. We can write a letter. We can also... I don't know what Margate's... Margate or Longford are doing. Things. Yeah. They're just as impacted. Yep. All right. I'll, we'll try and put something. Jim said he would help write it. So good. We can do that. Yep. He was on. Would you just clarify what that is? Because we're not sure what they're asking. Lance, but sure. So the state about two years ago decided to change the rules on how high homes had to be, different development zones. They created different. Um, Molasses zones um, on the coastline. And by implementing those rules, if you went to rebuild your home, or if your home was damaged by fire or something like that, or you wanted to build a new home, 
we're going to have to add five feet to what is already elevation 12. Right now, you have to build your finished floor in most zones at elevation 12. So the ground outside City Hall, this is the highest part of the island right around here. Uh, I'll, I'll take my home, for example. The, the elevation of my driveway is nine. So my finished floor has to be three feet above that right now. Add five feet to that. So then you're at 17 right. feet above flood elevation, above zero. So that's exactly the problem. And it's not just homes, it's businesses. Parking lots is the, the most idiotic requirement. You have to build a parking lot, not a garage, a parking lot above that elevation. Why? If this area is going to flood, no one's parking their car here. If they are, they're trying to get rid of it, <laughs> which happens. But, you know, if, 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 if it's flooding that bad, people aren't here. We, we get it. People left Florida. We didn't have as many fatalities. Uh, I don't, haven't heard from Milton. But people need to get out of the way. Um, it's, it's frustrating that we, wrote, we raise these issues. And it's not just us. Senator Palestine is an engineer. He knows this stuff hands down. He does this work for a living. And we brought him in. He jumped on it, like I said, two years ago. We met in this room and had the deputy secretary of or deputy director of the DEP here. We brought our concerns to him. And we'll be off ramps. Off ramps don't work with DEP. They just off ramps are um, waivers. I should use a different term. Um, they're very difficult to deal with. We're running into it now with our boardwalk project. So we might not be able to remove vegetation while we're replacing the boardwalk. How do you do that? So it's frustrating you're dealing with the state agency, um, and that's why we're pushing back on it, um, knowing that we're not probably going to win this battle because those rules will be adopted in the next 20 to 30 days. Yeah. If, you wanna, if your home is damaged or you're going to build a new home, you're going to have to meet these new rules. And if so, for example, say if you elevated your home after Sandy and you're at elevation 12, now the new rules are at 17, five feet higher. They will not, your FEMA insurance is going to go through the roof because your flood insurance, because you don't comply anymore. So some people have spent $150,000 to elevate their house to meet standards, FEMA standards, and now they're going to go up. I'm doing it right now. My house has started moving. Oh. And you're the exact person that we're concerned about. Yeah. Because now your flood insurance is going to be higher. Now, I'm, I'm trying to pay my house off so I don't have to pay flood insurance. That, that's the answer. You don't, you don't get flood insurance if you don't have a mortgage. You don't have to. You can. You don't have to. Um, it's frustrating. It, it's extremely frustrating. We've been trying, before Tom even got it, we've been bad on this, this whole thing. And, and it's just not, it's falling on deaf ears. And I, I tell you, the, the biggest issue that I have with it is it wasn't done through the, the rulemaking process. It was, it was just the governor, executive order, passed these rules. Didn't go through the legislature. None of our, none, none of our local representatives had a say in it. It's, so after 30 days, what are the options? If they're, if they're going to adopt it in 30 days, what, what do people have? By litigation. You know, are, are all the municipalities going to get together and file litigation against it? And trying to get a judge to stop it. I don't know. Hmm. That's, that's one of our only ways around it. So the clock's ticking. Clock's ticking. And it, does, it, it is kind of like the pendulum swung so far in the other direction where a gradual, you know, I don't think anybody denies that there's flooding problems or that we should not. Well, absolutely. But, but yeah, but it, this just doesn't seem like we can, we can respond. People that can't go on the steps. Maybe today they can go on them. Maybe tomorrow something happens, and you're talking about all these steps. Yep. Exactly. Most people put an elevator in. They have to get to the elevator, the steps to get to the elevator. They have so. What I've seen in homes now that come before the planning board a lot is you you walk in a door and and, and basically your garage. And you have an elevator in your garage, it takes you upstairs. It's an enclosed room. Yeah. But, and all the mechanicals have to be above that. So it's really lifting it up. It's not pushing it up. But it's a, whole, it's a sea change for the design of the entire, all the residences and the commercial buildings and the municipal buildings in town. So it, uh, it just seems like, a, like it's been rushed. Yep. 
That's all I have. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, the only thing I had was um, I want to congratulate the green team again for being awarded a silver level certification. This is something that, um, you know, that's a, that's an all volunteer organization. They work tirelessly. I think where the uh, Nanette is on, she is at Harbor city is the only other County in Atlantic besides ourselves that have this, she was there first um, to get the silver designation. It, um, it does, uh, it does a lot of things. It gives us uh, um, not just the recognition and prestige, but it gives us more access to grants and funding. Um, it, uh, the, the actions that they take have real community impact and environmental impact. And if you've seen it over the years, if you, uh, it's hard not to, not to see the, everything from the plastic ba bag ban, um, pollinator garden, They've been active in uh, other things that we've done as a city, like the charging stations. Uh, they've done a tree inventory thing. Just every year they do a number of these actions. They brought them to a silver level. That's uh, where we got the, the plastic, um, microplastics. The microplastic came band. from them, came yeah. from Steve. You know, and these are, this is, doesn't happen in every municipality. These are all, these are, these are uh, an active and uh, very well, um, uh, uh, well thought of and, and well educated green team. So I just wanted to thank them um, for that. Um, I also uh, had a brief meeting today with the ACIT on the conceptual design for the eco park. They seem very excited about putting it into their curriculum for next uh, semester, um, having the, having their students part of it. Um, so we're going to meet again next week. Um, and they have some other professionals that want to get involved in that as well to sort of help with the students and be a part of that. And I, um, uh, Tom and I discussed proposals for uh, designs from our pool of engineers for that as well. So get proposals for proposals, I guess, will be the next step. And that's all I have. Um, so at uh, this time, I can open the floor up for uh, take up a motion for public comment. So moved. I'll second. Can have a roll call, Lisa? Mr. Langria? Yes. Mayor Creeble? Yes. So at this point the public meeting is open for comment to discuss any topic of interest if you will come to the microphone state your name and address for the record and mm -hmm. Michelle Gratz 224 North Newark Avenue I am here to propose new bike hours controversial topic I am sure there are people that love bikers on the boardwalk, people that hate bikers on the boardwalk. I love to ride on the boardwalk. I went up on the boardwalk on a Sunday evening, and I was actually very surprised to see the class one officers telling people they had to get off because I love to ride my bike on the boardwalk. And there was actually very few people on the boardwalk. Right. So I did a little bit of investigation, and I found that you know, like I said, people hate to ride on, you know, hate people on the boardwalk. So I, I looked to see how many bike accidents there are. And there really are actually very few accidents. I had a friend who did an OPA request. Found that this summer there was only two. There was two in August. And they actually were, one was at 921 in the morning. And one was at 805 at night. On the boardwalk. On the boardwalk. So there's very few. So I thought about it. When is the best time to have people on the boardwalk riding? It's certainly not when the lifeguards are there. That's when you have the most people on the boardwalk, right? 10 a.m. is when the lifeguards go. 6 p.m. is when they go off. So if you think about it, if you, have, if you let BART people ride on the boardwalk, 5 a.m. to say 10 a.m., and then most people are off the beach about 5 p.m., let them on 5 p.m. to about 10 p.m. That's when you have most people are off the boardwalk because you're most people are going on and off while people are on the beach. So if you think about it, the reason why you want to let bikers on the boardwalk is during those hours, safety and reduced foot traffic, riding early in the morning and later in the evening coincide with lower foot traffic. It also allows people to ride to and from work. So you have people like your badge checkers. They can get from here to where they need to be 
to check badges. You have people who work in Atlantic City who live in Ventnor. Like I actually have some friends who work at the hospital who like to ride their bikes. So they'll be able to ride to and from still to work. And it promotes a healthy lifestyle, which means physical activity for all ages. It promotes a healthier community. The boardwalk is a safe place for exercise. A lot of people don't like to ride in the street. You know, Atlantic Avenue, Ventnor Avenue, it's hard to ride alongside the cars that are parked there. I know I don't like to ride there. I love the boardwalk. Tourism appeal. The boardwalk, um, most people enjoy riding on the boardwalk. It's a way to explore a coastal area. It enhances the attractiveness of Ventnor as a destination for a visitor who wants to experience the boardwalk in a unique way. There's environmental benefits. Promoting biking reduces a reliance on motor vehicles, contributing to a lower carbon emissions and a more environmentally friendly community. And if we bike during those hours, it's a limited disrupt disruption, minimizes p potential disruption to pedestrians. So it, it's a compromise between the bikers and the pedestrians. So I hope you'll consider this. I think it's a good compromise. I, I like the idea. When we, we've talked about it, we were looking for hours to see how we could do it. 10 to 6 already, you're not allowed to ride. We right. know that for the lifeguards and, and the beach access. Um, well, if you look at the ordinance during the week, it's I think you're allowed to ride all day. I think till noon. Weekends. It's the weekends, it says. It's the noon. Is that what Saturday it is? Saturday and yeah. Sunday till noon. But then if you let people back on in the evening, I think it would be in the yeah. compromise. So I hope you'll consider that. I like the suggestions. So, um, yeah, no, no, I might even extend it later into the evening. Yeah. We're always debating this. The, the the flip side, there's always a you know an a, an, a, a, an action to a, a reaction. Um, is that um, people that prefer to walk don't mm -hmm. like to walk when bikes are on the boardwalk. Yes, and that and it's usually people, old older folks that feel mm -hmm. comfortable when bikes are going by. And that's also sometimes um, that and that's usually. Incidental when there are people that are speeding on those bikes, yeah. like those, like could be those kids that you said that are beach mm -hmm. badge checkers. That then for them at that age, they feel like it's their time, mm -hmm. so you're taking something away. But for me, and I agree, I think that a, bike, a more bikeable community is more walkable community. And the evenings when people are going to dinner, potentially they could use the the boardwalk rather than the than the bike lanes on the street. So I'm. Um, I think we just have to come together on a, on the times. Yeah, yeah. Might be push the, the bikes in the evening after, like maybe seven ish. You know what I mean? Let yeah. them don't let them come back on until after seven. So okay. people are walking to dinner and walking after dinner. Yeah. And, so the other confusion or the other conflict is that the beaches and the lifeguards may leave at five, but that means yep. everybody's walking off. So you have you're you're inviting that cross traffic at five o'clock mm -hmm. if you allow them at five. So you know, I'd push it a little bit later. Said, you could push, push it to push maybe it to seven, six, six seven. Because right. you also want people maybe to be able to ride home from the beach on their bikes too. Yeah, yeah. And daylight hours is one of the rules, and that's only that's during the um, the winter. The winter, I think it's all yeah. the time during daylight yeah. hours. So were you at night on a Sunday when you got asked? We actually it was around five o'clock oh. in, in August. In August. It was August. So it wasn't the sun. It was still the yeah, sun. Yeah, we had a five-year-old with us, so we didn't yeah. go too late. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's. I agree. I'd rather be on the boardwalk and away from cars, especially with yep. all the, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the. the with little ones, people. you know. Yeah. But thank you for considering it. Sure. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Hi. Hello, everyone. My name's Barbara Castle, 713 at Cambridge Avenue. Um, my goal today is to open a discussion regarding a city ordinance matter. Myself, Shelley Durazio, as well as many members of our community have expressed concern over the unpleasant facade of 6606 Ventnor Avenue, the Dollar General, uh, which recently opened in our downtown business district. Uh, the concern prompted me to ask, what can we do as a proud city and community to transform that situation into an opportunity to enhance, revitalize, and create something beautiful by way of a thoughtful and professionally executed mural? Um, of importance is the owner of the building, as well as the tenant, Dollar General, who has a 10-year lease, 
have given permission to erect a mural on the front of that building. Um, and also of importance is according to Dollar General, Dollar General's manager, it's the only Dollar General location on a main street in town rather than on the outskirts. This revelation is a further incentive to create a more aesthetically pleasing storefront. With an optimistic mindset, I have tentatively set up a mural art committee consisting of myself, Shelley, Sue Van Dyne, and Patty Ketsiora to ensure the mural aligns with the heart and soul of Vetner. In closing, I would finally add that research shows that public art enhances pride in the neighborhood, it boosts economic activity, shows visual representation of history and its culture, it provides a photo opportunity to the community and its visitors, it elevates people's moods and helps to combat social isolation and anxiety. I thank you all for your keen attention and your consideration. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you. Um, we have murals on other buildings. There's mm -hmm. one at Vendor Coffee. Mm -hmm. There's one at um, Suntan Place. On the sides. I think size diction is the front is what they're asking. And then Shellum's has it on the side, right? Yeah. So only on the side of the building. Right. And so that if we were to have, as, as example, 6606 Ventnor Avenue, I don't know if you're familiar with that building. It's a whole street long. Um, it's not very appealing to the, no, to the, like, yeah, like wall. To the downtown. And I went up and looked at it because I was on the Ventnor Forum. Everybody was talking about it. And I rode my bike up there and I stood across the street and looked at it and thought, wow, this is just a blank canvas waiting for. And I'm a huge art fan and a huge fan of uh, murals and cities. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I went back and rode on the back on the forum and said, what did people feel about a mural? An overwhelming response of people said, oh, my goodness, it would be wonderful. It would be the first, it would be a big deal, a real big deal here, because it would be the first front-facing mural really around. I know Brigantine doesn't have any, um, it's not typical to have one in the front of the building. So it would be a huge kind of innovative thing to do. Um, but I think that, I guess what I'm saying is, what can we do as a community, a city, when we have a building? that is not aligning with how we want our downtown to look, is there anything we can do? <clears throat> Excuse me. And also to bring also public art into the forefront. Um, some people have proposed that a mural goes on the side of that building, but what good will a, a mural do on the side of that building and then leave the building blank? Um, I just think it's something that would bring a lot of attention to that. Um, I know that Jane Golden, I don't know if anyone's familiar with her, but she grew up in Atlantic City, um, in Margate, and she um, went to Atlantic City High School. She founded the Philadelphia Mural Arts Program. She's probably the number, she's probably the most famous person regarding mural arts in the world. Is, is there a rule where they can't do it on the front of the building? Uh, painting a sign is directly on a wall, window. It says sign. It's not a sign. So, so if it's not, if it doesn't advertise the product that's being sold or the business, it's not a sign. If it's a mural, it's art. Right. We don't, I don't think we have any jurisdiction over it. Yeah, so that's kind of where I was going. I don't, I don't know that we want to create an ordinance that encourages it in a way because then you're... Uh, so I've been involved in several of them in Atlantic City and... Uh, if as long as the building owner is okay with it, the tenant's okay with it, and it's not obscene, obscene, which well, that's why I well, I'm trying to. You, what did the judge say the one time? I know what it is. If I say it, I just can't explain it. Yeah, and I know what I'm talking about. I'm just not saying the right words. So I think what you're also what you're also proposing is not just this single. And this is where I think you have to draw a distinction. You're, you're proposing maybe doing a project across the whole city. And for me, I, I mean, are you or not? You create a committee for this one particular. Yeah. The storefront would be between you, the owners, and the, the the people who rent it. And then for the city's involvement, it, like as Lance said, I don't think it would be, it, as long as it's not inappropriate, it's G-rated. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it would be G-rated. And that's why I said we would have 
and uh, 40 at our committee were Susie and I and yeah. several people who are respected in the community with yeah. an eye for art would be the ones that would say, yes, this crosses, you know, checks all the right. boxes of what's appropriate. And that would be, I think, what, what I wanted to do is that would be the first mural. And Shelly had an amazing, extraordinary idea. Um, and she said that down the line, if other businesses said, wow, well, we want, we want a mural too. Um, then maybe it could be something that falls under the beautification committee mm -hmm. that we handle and they do a lottery and once, once per year, we, one business has, we fund half of it or whatever is made up. And then at least it's a slow growth. It's one per year. Um, and all the stores are much smaller, but yeah, I think that, I mean, I think public art is beautiful and I think it brings a lot of attention. And I actually think that it would bring, I think that I actually reached out to Jane Golden because I, I interviewed a couple of new artists. Um, their, their names are uh, the Barbins. They have a, um, an art gallery in Brigantine. And they were, their name was given to me as the, you know, the top mural artists in the area. So they came to the building and looked at it. They told me a price of what it would be. I told them some ideas and we talked about all those things. And then in order to be able to say to you guys um, this next statement, I called Jane Golden's office and spoke with her assistant and told her, we were from, I was from Ventnor, what my idea was, would, who would she um who, who would she pick as her top candidates to do the mural? And I was so happy that it was the people that I picked, the people that I interviewed in the right. game. So I know that. Um, so I guess my question goes, sorry, no, sorry, to Nicole. Uh, it's not a sign. It's not a sign. I'd say if we don't, I'm just trying to see if we had any. Yeah, I have the ordinance here. It says the only thing that really came up was the last ordinance, the last uh, the line of ordinance, one 102-118 that says the painting of signs directly on a wall, window, or other portion of the building is prohibited. So it doesn't really say, it doesn't use the word mural or use the word art. But, but a sign is defined as advertising, advertising either a business or a product. Yeah. yeah so, but I, I think what's being suggested here, and I don't want to put words in people's mouths, is to create by ordinance, a committee where somebody wanting to do this would have to file an application okay. that would be reviewed by the committee yes. and subject to their approval. Uh, All right. I don't know who's so that's, that's, that's kind of exactly how Atlantic City it, works. Right. Yeah. Atlantic City is 110 murals. I know. I, I so, heard them. With, so uh, let me speak a minute. Um, so they have the Arts Foundation, they have 48 Blocks Arts Foundation, Atlantic City Arts Foundation, whatever they call it. And it's residents, some artists, um, business owners and and some people from the city as well, and that's what they put together. I mean, I don't have a problem doing that. What you have to be careful of is if they come up with an idea, who is a city can't say unless it's blatantly vulgar. Right. It's hard to say no because it's art. Right. Well, that's why you have to put the burden on the survey and Right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Exactly. Like I said, I'm, look, exactly. The ones in Atlantic City have really spruced up a lot of the buildings in AC. Yeah. And, and it's helped. And that's the point I was going to make is that a lot of times that you see these very honorable mural programs are in cities like uh, West Philadelphia, mm -hmm. or I, you know, I, I had a, a friend that was part of that, or Asbury Park, where there mm -hmm. are empty storefronts, where there there's an, as, an, as, a, as an approach to change the blight into something that's attractive to help spur development. I don't know that, that I don't really think vendors at the place where we need to need a, a a, a mural on every yeah. front like that. And, and so that's where you're going to find disagreement. And, and with me is that I, I, I personally would like to see the downtowns of Vendor have attractive storefronts and where there's a, a large space that's not facing the street. That's where I would see a mural. I, I don't, I personally think that the downtowns are a, and are, should be a, a destination, but they should also feature the businesses first in, a, in that type of a light. But, okay. So you're going to find those. You're going to find you know art is a subjective, and so are these programs. But as the, as our administrator says, it, I don't think any. I don't think the two of us have any objection to you be, you taking the burden of starting a committee that would then present. Are, the are, are you interested in having Nicole draft 
an ordinance that would create that committee for you. I'll have an yeah. objection to it. Yeah. Start it off. No, no, I think that's look and, and look, some of the murals might not be like as flashy as they have in AC, but a mural in the front of the building that creates the downtown that you're looking for like right. They're almost like a, like like, a, like uh, a in this case, like a storefront of a of a exactly, five and nine. Exactly. And they that. look like that. And then you then you can add that might be a little bit of a signage kind of thing. We'd have to cross that threshold when we when we get Three there. Climate. But I mean that's something no. that if you look at, I'm trying to think which casino, Tropicana had it. Yep. Along Pacific Avenue. They had, it was, it was relief. It wasn't really a mural. It was actually carved into the stone. Right. Concrete. But that's something you could do. For people, it looks like people are walking down the street, but it's a mural. Yeah. Yeah. That's something. Yeah. And I definitely yeah. think too that um, there's many, many people. Yeah, get to the microphone, Shelly, if you want to talk. There's many, many people who um, would enjoy that. Yeah, listen. That's you know, um, I don't I don't disagree that there's merit. Um, I just but I understand, yeah, I understand. Your, I understand. I get where you're coming from too. So thank you very much. I, right, I think Shelly wants to talk on as well. You have to come up. You have to come up. And you have to raise your house. Shelly Durazio, my thousand boardwalk. Are you okay? I'm okay. Okay. Uh, my opinion is if you keep with the seashore theme. You won't run into a problem of people, some people being offended and it's a, a soft look rather than something very bold mm -hmm. and see, keep it flowing. Mm -hmm. And this way we won't have run into an issue like we did with the utility boxes. Right. Something that I would love I'm sure to find somebody who'll be offended by anything that gets put uh, by a seashell. <laughs> it's hard to protect. Trust me. A seashell. Trust me. There's there's pretty much a, the, there's a deep bench of folks that would be, and, and just art in general. I mean, you know, there were you know there were people that Monet was was thrown out. He was an impressionist, and they who was this person? They can't draw a straight line. You know, like right, there, there's, there's no there's no there's no there's no right answer. Right, but we want to keep it soft and flowing yeah. and keep the concept, you know, rather than different, you know, something bold here, something soft there, just be consistent yeah. to keep the downtown looking very upscale. I, 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 don't, I don't disagree there's merit. Just a caution, and we'll support you with an ordinance and uh, just keep us in the loop. Yes, thank you. All right. Any other public Does comment? The commissioners want to be on the committee to just do the final to see the see, final. Maria's not here, so we will nominate her for that and nominate. <laughs> <laughs> we'll decide that later on. Yeah. I think, I think when we're in the house. Yeah. So just one comment on on from the net it says Egg Harbor City has bronze only. They don't have Jim Rattel. LOL. Oh. <laughs> I said setting goals. You'll get silver soon. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm sure you're on the way, Nanette. Um, any other public comments in the Zoom other than Nanette? No, there's no one else here. Well, hearing none, we got executive section. I close the public comment section. May I have a motion to close? Motion to close. I'll second. May I have a roll call, Lisa? Commissioner Landgraf? Yes. Mayor Creeble? Yes. Uh, I believe we have executive session. Uh, Lisa, will you please read the statement? The New Jersey's Open Public Meeting Act permits the discussion of certain matters within executive session as an exception to certain provisions of said law. The Vendor City Board of Commissioners wishes to discuss certain matters which qualify in its exception in executive session. No action binding upon the Board of Commissioners will be taken within executive session, and the discussion conducted in closed session will be disclosed to the public when legally permitted and when the public interest will no longer be served by keeping such matters confidential. The matters should be discussed or attorney client privilege. So, Lisa, you have a... Or, uh... Nicole, yes, uh, we are back from our executive session. During the executive session, we talked about uh, pending litigation in the matter of Comtech versus the city of Ventnor. Um, due to the fact that it's pending litigation, that's all we can say at this point. Okay. Seeing no further business tonight, uh, uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. 
Second, Lisa, roll call. Commissioner Langria? Yes. Mayor Kribel? Yes. Cigar night. 6.30, so. All right. 